Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Fertility Chats. We are in Santon today with Dr. Chris Fenter. Welcome Dr. Chris and thank you for having me today. Thanks Nadia and all the best this week for the, the pageant week. So we hope you from Vitalab side all the best for this week. Thank you so much. And may you reach high potentials. Thank you. So um, today we want to discuss secondary infertility. Can you perhaps give us a description of what is secondary infertility? Mm. I think secondary infertility is slightly different from primary infertility. So secondary infertility is where patients have been pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I always like to differentiate between two groups. The one group is where someone has had a pregnancy, has had a successful pregnancy and has a baby at home. Mm -hmm. And then the other group is where women would have a miscarriage or a ectopic pregnancy, a tubal pregnancy. And they will also be classified as secondary infertility. So. So they unfortunately have not had a baby and, and I do think we should slightly differentiate between mm -hmm. those two groups. But if someone, and I would like to focus on the patients who had a baby at home and now is struggling to conceive with, with the second or the third, the third child as well. Um, and I think when we look at these patients, we should always ask the question, but what has changed since your first pregnancy? Okay. So, from the first pregnancy to your second pregnancy, what is the time frame? How long should you wait before you start trying again? And for how long should you try before consulting a gynecologist or a specialist? So, yeah, and that's a very important question as well. So, so when someone has had a miscarriage and they will also go to the doctor and say, but doctor, when can we try again? Mm. Or when they've had a baby as well to say, listen, we don't have much time we want to have uh, complete our family. So usually someone had a cesarean section or had a delivery. So the, the usual time to wait, at least six months. Um, why is it so important? Well, it is important for that uterus to recover, to heal itself. We do know if someone conceives earlier than within that six months period, there is a high chance of a miscarriage. Okay. Um, and that basically goes for someone who's had a, a miscarriage as well, that there we can slightly say, well, rather wait three months and then try and conceive again. I do think it is very important that before you try and conceive again after a miscarriage, is maybe just to get try and get some answers why it did happen. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, if there is problems, it can be sorted prior to, to having another pregnancy and most likely having a high chance of another miscarriage as well. I do think it is also important to ask the question, but when should I get concerned um, and when should I seek for uh, uh, medical advice? And it's usually we, we take a period of 12 months. So if you are trying for 12 months to conceive and you have not conceived naturally, well, it's time to, to go and see a, a specialist. If you are older than 35 years of age, we say, well, then wait for for 12 months, obviously we don't have much time, so rather after six months go and just see the gynecologist and make sure that everything is proper before trying to conceive. So Dr. Fenter, what would you say are the main causes or the common causes for secondary infertility? Yeah, and it's, um, it's always, if I, if I look at a patient who had a successful pregnancy, and they say, doctor, and it's usually it works out this way as well. We, we, people say, yes, doctor, our first baby, we fought about the pregnancy and within a month or two, we were pregnant. And I always say, well, okay, what has changed since then? So, so usually, and especially in our practice as well, so they've had surgery, so they've had a cesarean section. And we know for cesarean sections or any other intervention process, there can be scarring of the uterus. So we, we tend to see that quite a lot in our practice where the uterus unfortunately has been scarred a bit due to the surgery so so uterine scarring is one thing the other thing that we do see as well is when patients do take time before they go for number two or number three babies is that they, they become older and we do know that when women do become older it can affect the air quality it can affect their time to a pregnancy as well so the older patient it does take longer to reach to get that golden egg as well and I think patients if they do understand it I think uh, they become a bit more reassured um, but I also think it's a very good opportunity just to alert them as well but maybe your egg reserve has 
diminished quite a bit and maybe we should start employing some methods to to try and get you quicker to that to that golden egg so that is age and that is uterine scarring other things as well when the woman has breastfed uh, we know prolactin is a woman that gets secreted when you are lactating and that can uh, prevent women from ovulating as well so we want to see that the prolactin levels has, has dropped a bit as well and I think one thing, I think once you get married as well, we all there, um, you do pick up weight as well. And it's not just the females, it's the males as well. So we all get our pupensis and we all pick up a bit of weight and, and it does unfortunately have an effect on your sperm count. So if someone picks up 10 to 15 kilograms of weight, um, he becomes inactive, um, he starts smoking, we do see it, it does affect the male's fertility as well. The question in age in males, um, we know it does not have similar effects on, on the male sperm count, but after the age of 45, we do start seeing some changes in male's sperm count. So he might not have those good swimmers that he had when he was, was younger as well. To go back to the females as well, if you um, would look at their age and also look at their weight as well, we'll like I say, we all do pick up a bit of weight after our weddings. Um, it get, then can sometimes su su superimpose some conditions as well. Like if some women do have polycystic ovarian syndrome, when they pick up 5 to 10 kilograms of their weight, uh, we know it can suddenly make them not to start ovulating as well. So, so even small changes like that can affect your, um, your chances of conceiving. And again, I think what we don't see as much in our practice um, is something like previous other surgeries as well, abdominal surgeries, um, where, and it can happen during the seizure as well, where someone can get tubal damage, where the tube can pick up damage during the surgery, and, and that can affect um, the chances of conceiving. The last thing, we talk about the aging egg as well, but um, we also know the uterus can also age. Not as quick as the eggs, but we know women above the age of 35, there's about a 35% chance they might start developing fibroids, um, uh, thickening of the muscle of the uterus. They can start developing adenomyosis. And the last thing as well, that we sometimes see women that they had their first baby at a very young age, then they take quite a while to conceive again, and if there was underlying endometriosis, that endometriosis could have worsened during that sort of waiting period as well. So. So I think those are all things that we want to sort of identify and then to address that during our consultation. Okay. So doctor, if a couple comes into your office with secondary or possible secondary infertility issues, what are the routine tests that you would do um, to see what's going on with the patient? So usually it will start and it, it, like you said, it is the couple, the male and the female needs to come and see us. Um, we will start with taking the, the weight just to see are they overweight and just address that to say do you realize and I think everyone realizes it but they are overweight take a routine history to hear are they smoking what is their lifestyle habits those are small things we can address but if we then look at the males we'll start with a semen analysis just to see what is the sperm count like and has there been sort of a um, worsening of his initial sperm count if you had one in his previous years then if we look at the females we first thing that we would like to do is we do an ultrasound scan during the scan you can look at what is there any pathology in the uterus if there is any conditions in the uterus that you can see on the ultrasound scan and the next thing that we'll do is just to look at the female's egg reserve we will go and count those antral small follicles eggs in the ovaries and just make sure she's got a good egg reserve after that, we will then just try to establish tubal status to see if the tubes are open. So, so usually for this, we will just do a hysterosalpingogram, which is just a, a quick x-ray we'll do to just establish that the tubes are open and functional. Um, and then once we've made the diagnosis, then we will start just to addressing that by what the cause are for the secondary infertility. So you mentioned scarring. Can you pick up scarring with the ultrasound? So usually scarring, you can see these hyperechoic areas, these, these white areas on ultrasound scan. But the best way of diagnosing is we would do an hysterosalpingogram. 
So we always like to see a triangle shape of the uterine cavity and sometimes you just see a distortion of that shape and you would know there is some scarring within that uterus. Um, and that's, that's the best way of trying to pick up a scar. If you look at the uterine a cesarean section scar, that you can pick up with an uh, ultrasound. And what women are complaining quite a lot afterwards as well is then when they have their period, then usually they will have now a, this has changed since their first pregnancy, this prolonged period where they will, for a few days after the period will still um, have this dark brown blood that they expel. And again, we, we know that this blood is uh, toxic to sperm. And usually during the time of ovulation, they secrete this old blood and the sperm can't, cannot penetrate oh. this, this sort of uh, blood collection. So, so on, if we look at the treatments, um, so again, we would try and identify the diagnosis um, and then go and treat it. But if it's not, if we cannot correct it surgically, so this will be cases where the female has now has a lower egg reserve or the male sperm count has lowered and even weight loss and that cannot improve his sperm count, we will then know that, well, there's two ways of managing you. Are we going to do intrauterine insemination or do we want to progress to in vitro fertilization? I don't think in vitro fertilization we know is sevenfold more effective than any other treatment modality there is. Why is it so effective? Um, two reasons is that you can stimulate females to try and get more eggs, fertilize all these eggs all at once, and then identify the good quality embryos and then transferring that as well. So by doing IVF, you do accelerate the time to a pregnancy as well. And, and I think people that, that has been waiting and get frustrated about trying to get their second or third child, they are tired of waiting. They sometimes just say, now we just want to get to effective treatment and we want to start moving on with our second or third child. One thing, always our patients complain about the gap between their second or third child or first or second child is getting too wide and they were worried that these children might grow apart and will, um, the, that the age gap will be too big for them to be, to be big buddies. Um, and, and that you do understand it. So it's, I think it is very empowering to know that there's something very good that you can offer your patients that has a high success rate. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Fenter. Do you have perhaps a take home message for our viewers? Yeah, I just think patients need to, um, they need to know what's going on. I think we're living in a era where people are well informed, our patients are well informed. They need answers and we know we can't, cannot always give the answers, but we can at least go and tick a few boxes to say, well, we think this is the cause of your fertility. So I do think it's very fair if a patient would go and ask these questions to their gynecologist or the reproductive specialist to say, doctor, what's going on and how can you assist us? And I think um, they deserve that. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching. Have a look out for our next episode, episode six, that will be launching soon.